Oi, oi. Welcome to Heathrow Short Stay. It is chocker block, dude. Chocker block. What? Like Willy Wonka chocker block? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know where to start, apart from the fact the sun's blinding me. Black hole sun, won't you come? Should we turn away from the sun? Yeah, but then you've got it in your camera lens, haven't you? That's okay. You get some arty lens flare. Whee! Is that cameraman speak? I'm going to say, he sounds like Is a Hollywood it? actor, arty lens flare. Trying to... arty lens flare. <laughs> oh. I'm sure I've seen him in some kind of adult movie. Oh, look now, hang on. <laughs> right, smash through the intro. And we'll see what madness is going on in the madhouse. Whoop! Where to start? Ferrari we know about, McLaren we know about. Uh, Matt's got to put his Lambda probe on his Evo and then I can finish tuning it. But you know what people are like, they're lazy on their own cars. Yep. Uh, finished a wiring, tidying the wiring up on the roof and we just keep testing that, make sure that's happy. Then this one, we've done the bumper, uh, sorry, we've done the exhaust and given it a check over, we've found some bits and pieces and then wants to carry on fixing that. So we get those sorted. I can't even remember what everything is. Uh, the S6 is in for leaking thermostat housing. So we'll get that sorted tomorrow, V10, yo. Uh, this one has been parked up a while and now she smokes, so I need to fix it. Uh, the steering rack is on the S7. Uh, it's just got to go for wheel alignment, uh, but he's also asked us to check the wheels uh, because he gets a vibration. So we'll probably get the wheels straightened because they buckle easy. Yep. There are some more down there and I can't remember. MXM is waiting on authorization off the customer because we found a list of stuff it needed. Yep. Uh, my van, G Dog's van. Your van, G Dog's van. Um, not much else has changed down there. Inside. This is Graham's R1. I say Graham's R1, it's Mikey's R1. Graham just pays for everything on it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, way. Mikey is uh, the lad we sponsor who raced in junior superstock last year and he's in british supersport this year so he rides for leon haslam's team but this is dad's bike so this was built by paul at pcr um but we've just changed spring for him today so because mikey's getting fat in his old age <laughs> uh sky hook module is on this so that's error free now it's just got to go down for mot this afternoon and then uh, Scott can have it back. Uh, Carl is putting the engine back in Tosh's and then he is abandoning us to go to Japan. 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 You excited? Yes. Konnichiwa. This is as excited as I this, Yeah, I know. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Children born. Yeah, it's all right. Buzzing. I know, I can't wait to see you do like 18 hours in economy. <laughs> Ow, my legs! Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Do you think your heart will click clack louder I when might, thinner air? I might die on the plane. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen. Which one of the boys gets to keep your toolbox if that happens? I don't want it. I nearly fell over. Oh dear. Uh, there we go. It's just full of broken T30s uh, anyway, isn't it? Oh, so the engine sat back in. There is. Get that back together. He's just assembling the inside, so that's okay. Um, Mitchell has done a carbon clean. Uh, so this was Ben's car, who was the head of marketing for Fruxton Race Circuit. He's now sold it to a guy called Guy. Yeah. Yeah, that does make sense. And he's flying down from Aberdeen tomorrow to pick it up. Uh, so that's going. Dan's car is in for service which Matthew's just done. Uh, and then it's going for MOT, but it needs some tires. What else is going on? The Skyline's off a ramp because we just needed a ramp. <laughs> yeah, nothing's happened. No, just off um, I got to chase JDM for the bits that we need for that as well. Okay. Um, what else is going on? Not much else, really. Anything going on in engine corner? No, things are in bits. Okay. That was the last sort of bit to come out of it, so that's okay. 
Um, wheels, cars on the dyno, an engine room just looks like it's full of engines. There you go. An engine bomb hit it. Yes. So now, work-wise, it's crazy. Crazy. Uh, we've got a couple left to go. Um, what? Well, JP? No, it's not JPG. Which one do we fix? The wiring one. That's done, ready to go. That's Oliver's car. That's ready to go. Uh, that was full of water and rotted out the interface module. I think we've shown that, haven't we? I can't remember. Look, hold that still. That is grotty. Yep. So changed all the wiring, yep. put a new module in it, dried it out. So we had to strip all the interior out, uh, both sides, dried it all out. So yeah, that's all done. And there's a, a bobble hat on a stick. Yeah. There we Two go. bobble hats on a stick. I don't want to get it dirty. <laughs> I'll take that one off and I'll wear that one to get dirty. That's your work bobble. That's my work bobble. And that's your party bobble. <laughs> um, so yeah, what else has gone on? What else has gone on? What's happy happening? No, I think that's it. Is that it? The daily grind, but uh, Yeah, pretty much. Never ends. Yeah, so I went to Paul's Wednesday, PCR Wednesday. So they finished building my engine and I put that back in. Um, because otherwise I would have had to have gone up, got the engine, drove back, never put the bike back together. Yep. And then rushed right at the last minute. So I went up there all day Wednesday, put a bike back together and then they've run it in on the dyno. Um, and then I'll pick it up and bring it back just so I can get it ready to go to Spain. Um, yeah. yeah, and this is how much mates, this is how blokes don't talk to each other. I could have brought Mikey's back, Mikey's bike back. No. That's why you came in last Monday, wasn't it? Yeah, you were filming. Yeah, and then G <laughs> left. Yeah. And then we didn't talk to each other and he rung up, he spoke to Paul and Paul's like, oh, Rick's here. <laughs> could have took his bike up, but we should do that. We should do like a Swindon based return and collection service for Paul because like messy yeah Messi's bikes up there your Mikey's other bikes up there isn't it my bikes up there so maybe I should just do that sack this all off drive a van picking bikes up logistics yeah I know. get involved there's a future in that too yeah. carrying shit around yeah not just FBA CBS no. yeah carrying broken shit yeah I like that well as opposed to CBA which you just can't be asked yeah or CPS which is Children pay him for shit. What is that? CPS. What would it be? Is it CPS? Crowd prosecution. No, yeah, service. yeah. No, what's the one called where they they decide how much money you've got to give for the kids for your ex? Oh, um, CSA, CSA. That's it. Is it yeah. No. That's it. no. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a lot of time in Japan. Do they have a Japanese CSA? Yeah. So yeah. That is all right. Cool. We have okay. some questions. Go. Question time. Yeah, but I do need to make my soapbox. Uh, my Lambo box that I used to see in my toolbox. Right, Chimmy Stew. How much does Matt spend on hair gel a week? Nothing wrong with it. My barber wouldn't be impressed with that. Your barber? Yeah. Do you not go to a hairdresser? To Why? What is the difference? Well, hairdressers for women. And they're not. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fair point. Good to barbers. Yeah. You can't say that because now you're implying that women can't go to barbers. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. So yeah, you. What, what product do you use? Oh, hang on, I've got to go back over now. Not Mike. Oh yeah, yeah. George not that it's. Rare. Come and stand next it's, to him. It's really good stuff, actually. It's uh, axle good, no. grease. Um, a bit of engine oil. Yeah. Uh, aqua wax, red one stuff. So if they want to send me some. We are not sponsored. Great. This is not a paid promotion. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's all right. If you, know, you get me some, that'd be a winner. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this feels very bike heavy. Uh, Nicola Shet, are there any particular classic bikes you'd ever want to ride? Uh, depends what you mean by classic. Because I've ridden a TZ250 and that was absolutely rubbish. Um, I've ridden an RC45 and that was still rubbish. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means. 
It'd have to be a two-stroke. I wouldn't mind riding old GP two-strokes, I think. So, or if we go in classic bikes, because 20, 20 years old now, we'll go for Valentino's Rossi 2004 Yamaha M1. That'll do. The one he kissed at South Africa because he proved that it was him and not the bike. So that's where it starts, really. That's it. That's how Mar everyone goes about God status, don't they, for Marquez. That's it. If Marquez comes this year to Ducati and wins, I will let his name be in the same breath as Valentino Rossi, but not yet. So that's it. What classics do you want to ride? What have you ridden? Right. I like to look at some of the old Manx Nautils. Yeah. Duncan's got some of those and they just look and sound cool. You know, something a bit, there's something a bit special about that era. I, do, I think I'd like to do it because like Coops does um, Goodwood, the revival. Yeah. And races there. So like yeah. a lot of BSB lads race that. That's quite cool. It looks like a good weekend out there actually. Get yeah. Up. I'd like to see Mikey ride one until you've got to pick up a bill for uh, a yeah, priceless. We, yeah, we'll try and avoid that. <laughs> If he doesn't, as long as he doesn't watch this video and get that that's a suggestion, then we're all right with that. But no, no, Mikey would not want to ride one. You can't he doesn't like old bikes, no. it, But he's so heavy on the front of a bike, you know, you can't imagine telling him that you can't do that. On he a... doesn't do, he needs to just chill, it's an old bike. Yeah. He'd get on it and go absolutely flat out, fold the front and go, well, the chassis is not very good. I go, it's, it's 50 years old, you know, that's why it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'd be my fault somehow. Can you imagine but, him? Why didn't you tell me? It's like, I tried to tell you, I did tell you, you didn't listen. Can you imagine him backshifting a Manx Norton like he does your R1? Oh, yeah, be... Mate, when you sent that video through, because it's so her last corner at a Horef is tapped in it. What's that? Fifth gear entry? Back to second? Oh, the end of the back straight. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Onto the last corner. Oh, that's fourth to second. Is it fourth, yeah, to, second? fourth to second? Yeah. When you sent through that video and he was literally like that, bah, 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 and he just went, wow! No, he, clo he closes, he literally closes throttle, two gears. And, it's and two then all gears you can hear is the back end coming round. Yeah, and yeah, then it stays round a little bit. And then eventually the revs catch up with the floor and then it comes back in again. And it's, um, it's nice that he could do that, but I'd rather he did it on someone else's bike. <laughs> That is. Bike that we're not paying engine refresh bills. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that is uh, what happens when it doesn't have to pay bills. Yeah, well, he's got no con. He doesn't understand. Not, he doesn't understand the implications of it. Don't need, he doesn't need to understand the implications yeah. of it. But he's got zero mechanical sympathy. He just goes right. This is the way to make it go fast, regardless of whether it means the engine's going to last three months rather than three years. This is how I'm going to ride it. Yeah. You know, which is a cool way to be. But um, he doesn't pick up the bills, so it's, a, it's not an Kids, ideal. Kids, mate, don't know they're yeah. born these days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can we have a follow-up video on how race spec looms are made? And then that's from Charlie Timmon. And then the next one is William Holmes, which is whilst noting electrical connections are dependent on load, what are generally the best, most reliable for both sensors and load connections? That's a little bit of a hard one. If I ask Angus to, from Motortronics, who does all the BSB looms, to do a video with us, he'll tell me to fuck off. Um, so we won't do that. But... Hang on. Reattach the microphone. DTM, the Deutsche series, are probably the most common. Um, and I have got some. So these are Deutsche. This is a DTM, right? That's a DTM 4 pin. Uh, that's a 12. Whee, throw it on the floor. Oh. But these are DTM. So these are really good, really reliable. They're waterproof. They're pretty cheap. Um, they're good crimp connections. They're, they're pretty well known. I don't think I've got any AS connectors, but I have got something with an AS connector on, so let me wander that way. We are not prepared today, Davla. We're not, but that's fine. And then that is what is all over my R6. So they are auto sport connectors. So they essentially carry the same sort of load, their sensors. Um, but obviously they're tiny and they yep. weigh nothing. They're just bloody expensive. Then you get into uh, these, but they're called dual density. They're double thickness or um, double walled. So they're very, very expensive. So it just depends what you're trying to do. That is motorsport level, but it's a, it's a positive mechanical lock. Um, you obviously then service or pigtail them or service loop them inside. So if there's damage or you stretch the connector off, there's some give or it allows the connector to come out. That's booted with RT125 as well. So that's a Raycan boot, so that's waterproof. So, you know, the bike can get soaking wet uh, or the car, cause obviously it's used in cars as well. Um, so that would be like a 20, probably a 22 or 24 gauge wire. 
And when you think majority of F1 is like probably a 30 gauge or a 32 gauge, they don't even strip the end of the wire. They just crimp directly onto the wire without stripping the insulation um, because that's its weight. I mean, that's three wires with some Raychem over the top and that's the thickness of it. So you think how complex some of the wiring looms are getting on. They're trying to keep weight down, but also sort of diameter of the finished loom. Um, when you start getting into load-ins and what connectors for what loads, that all then comes down to what you're trying to do, what the budget is, um, how that fits in with your project, because you can spend hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds on connectors. Um, so that comes down then to designing the loom, the in and outs of the loom. So you could build a loom completely on them gray DTMs, or you can build a loom completely on auto sports and there could be a thousand, 1500 quid difference. And that's, that's it. So that's a bit of a hard topic to get into, but a lot of it comes down to design and what you're trying to do. So the bike we showed you, the R6s we showed you last week, which were all sort of little binder connectors for the login. And then um, like Japanese Yamaha style connectors for the main stuff loom would be tuppence to make and then you look at the loom on my r6 and that's like a three and a half grand loom but then if i go and barrel roll my bike through the gravel and snap the loom in half i gotta go and buy another loom yeah so it just comes down to what you want to do um and reliability so another topic someone asked a question over where there's a million different answers uh william holmes Oh no, sorry, Steve P. I've had a few fast cars, including an R8 V10, a Porsche 997 Turbo, an F8 EM3, but I now own a 2018 RS3 as my daily. And I have to say that is by far the best performance car I've owned. It does everything. It's fast, comfortable, five cylinder engine sounds great. And the stage tune, stage two tune, there's not much that can live with it in the real world. Uh, how many cars, how many other cars offer all this? Do you agree? Uh, no, I don't agree. They are bloody good, but they're not the best performance car. Um, and I would rather be seen in a slow R8 than a very fast TT or a very fast RS3. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's just me. But you, you're a big fan of the Dazer engine. In, in I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, like you said, yeah, 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 mega yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, it's mega and they are bloody fast. They're easy to get over 500 horsepower out of. And he is right, there's not much on the real world that would that will live with them when you've got them to a decent level. But out of all that list, yeah. an R8 V10 or an RS3, no, I take a V10 all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing sounds like a V10 at 8,000 RPM. Yeah. Um, How much longer would we have these V10s? Yeah, but also I bet his stage two RS3 out of the box won't do 12s around Coombe. Yeah. We always go to Coombe but it's just because it's the most common benchmark for sort of what, what we do. But I'll tell you now, a, a 2000, uh, an R8 V10 with P4S's on will. So power isn't everything, and people kind of need to sort of not get that in their heads, but you try to explain to everyone all the time, it's area under the curve. It's like the old Cosworth sort of nothing, 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 everything that's hard to drive. Yep. But if you've got something that's say 100 horsepower less, but really linear all the way through, then that's amazing. Bloody hell, this does not stop. That's the same person four times in a row. Somebody's really trying to get hold of you. Yeah, I don't know why, it keeps saying chick on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a beating for that one later. That's my wife's name in my phone, so. <laughs> it wasn't you, Kate, honest. <laughs> um, I would say for 40, 50 grand, it probably is a best shout. You've got this problem at the minute, haven't you? Um, same boat. But it's like you said, like, he's probably going up against traffic lights and launch yeah. control and everywhere. Yeah. But like, don't get me wrong, it's going to be one of the quickest cars, not to 80, 90. But yeah. After that, what else does it offer, really? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Chucking it around the B roads, it'll be quick, but some manual. Yeah, because you say it does everything, it's fast and comfortable. A two hundred and fifty thousand pound Wraith is fast and comfortable, yeah. but it's. What's he doing? Chasing draggy times or something? Yeah. It's, it's, 
So it's, it's I think I think a lot of it is something because me and Jimmy who comes in here, um, he's my he's he's my friend. He's my friend that comes <laughs> in friends. here. Yeah. Oh, new friend. friend. Oh, friend. He's my friend. He came over Saturday. We were chatting, so he's in the same he's in the same boat. We basically built him an RS6 diesel. Um, and he thinks he's going to give that to his wife and then he wants to get a car. And we were going through, right, okay, so if you had 50 grand, what would you buy? What yeah. would you buy? It's actually really hard because yeah. he goes, oh, I could get an R8. You could get an R8, but you can't really daily it. Well, you wouldn't want to daily it. Yeah, so you go, right, okay, so you kind of rule that out. Then you go, okay, you wouldn't really want a 50 grand Porsche. If you're going to buy a Porsche, you kind of go 911 Turbo or GT3 or something like that. And you go... The M3, M4, M2 thing, everybody does it. The Golf R thing, everybody does it. The RS3 thing, you're in that bracket, aren't you? Where it's saloon hatchback cars that everyone does the same. You mentioned GTR, as in a 35. Little Dark Horse, Supra, new one. New Supra, yeah. But it's the same BMW platform. Everywhere. It is, but they actually look dirty. Yeah, with the right kit on them. In black. Oh, yeah. Splitter and diffuser on them, I think they look pretty dirty. Yep. Yeah. So that's a little dark horse that is. And they kind of get forgotten. I just need to drive one with that gearbox in because it's an auto, isn't it? It's not a DCT. Yeah. It's the new um, BMW box. Yeah. But, or would you manual, con no, manual conversion okay, on Supra. On. <laughs> no, la 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 la. Like it pulls up alongside you and everyone knows what it is. Yeah. No one's going to go, oh wow, it's amazing, you know? They are fast. They are very, very fast. It's like, but it says it on the box. Or something yeah. The di I think the difficulty is Steve's looking at it there from, he can only have one car. I think that's what yeah. it, yeah. I think that's yeah. how you look at it there. Yeah. So if you go and you can only have one car, yeah. I think, yeah, it's very hard to beat an RS3. <sighs> Or say an M3, something like that. Fast, comfortable, in a in a fifty grand price budget, insurable. Yeah, exactly. That's a big thing now, as well. You know, I think you wouldn't have it. You, I don't think anyone would ever really have an RS3 as a second car. So it's always going to be a primary car. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm miserable. Like... I'm miserable with cars. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's rubbish. That price point is very tricky. Very, very. Tricky. I think yeah. it is because yeah. you can spend thirty-five grand on a Yaris, and then literally get to the bottom of the road, and you're like, "This is brilliant, but slow." Yeah, but it's all plastic as well. Yeah. So it's like you touch it, it's awful to be a bike. Yeah. So. But yeah, maybe that's a comment you can ask everyone. What, what would you for fifty grand? What would you have? You're gonna buy, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Fifty grand. What something would you have? Quick, yeah. yeah. Something quick, obviously, but what is it going to be? Yeah. And. Some anything that's a bit off the wall, let us know. Like some rare Alpine or BMW or something that we might have missed out. Well, it's got to be 50 grand. You've got to be able to drive to the Nurbo Ring in it and then do a lap at the Nurbo Ring and then drive home. Yeah, with no issues. 50 grand is your budget, yeah. so you haven't got to spend more. Yeah, so it's got to be fast, be able to knock out mileage. Yeah, let us know what you think because we haven't got a clue. What do we know? Put it in the comments below and I'm going to have tea. So smash the buttons and we'll see you on the next one.